In this video, we will define the init method of the custom gym environment of the inventory management problem. The init method must define the environment's observation space and action space in the instance variables self.observation space and self.action space. Any other code needed to instantiate the environment should also go here. We will focus on defining the observation space and action space now. When defining the observation or action space for any custom environment, you need to decide on three things. First, the upper and lower bounds of the observation or action, which will set the bounds for the space. Second, you need to decide the type of your observation or action. So is it an array of floats? Is it an integer? Is it an array of integers? This will determine which type of space you should choose. So the table that you see here lists, uh, lists the three most common cases. And to see the complete list, you should visit Jim's documentation, which is here, uh, Jim's documentation on spaces. And I will put a link to that in the lecture notes as well. Or you can go to Jim's GitHub repo, then go to the Jim folder and then the spaces folder. And there you should also be able to see all the possible space types available. All right, so that's the first, those are the first two things like bounds and space type. Third, you need to define the shape of the observation or action if it is an array. So let's make these decisions for the action space for the inventory management problem. First, the upper and lower bounds. We know that the action is the number of products ordered on a given day. So the lower bound is certainly zero. The upper bound is the max capacity of your storage because we shouldn't order more than we can store. So let's say that the max capacity, which we represent as self.max capacity is 4,000 units. And that would be then the upper bound. The next question is, what's the type of the action? And since we can only order integer number of units, the action is naturally an integer. And therefore, the obvious space type is discrete. However, I am actually not going to choose discrete and I'm going to instead choose the box type. And that's because in problems where the number of possible actions is large, like something like 4,000, we can simplify the problem by approximating the action using a single floating point number. And if we train the agent to maximize rewards using floating point actions, I believe we can simply round off the agent's prediction to an integer when doing inference without much loss of performance. And that's because the integer nature of the action doesn't play a crucial role in this problem. This problem has pretty continuous dynamics. In problems where the integer nature is somehow critical, then you can stick with discrete. Also as a course project, you can also try to define uh, an environment just like I'm doing, but using the discrete of a action space instead of a box action space and see what kind of performance you get. Anyway, so I'm going to go with the box data type. So say self dot action space equals box. And then we need to represent the high and the lower, the upper bound and the lower bounds here. 
uh, we need to put that here but we have still not decided what should be the shape of the action space and since the data um, of the box type are represented by arrays we need to decide on the shape now this array needs to represent just one floating point number. So we could go for an array of rank um, zero, like set the lower bound by using an array of rank zero like this. However, this won't work because the minimum rank required by RLib uh, is one so we need to use a numpy array with shape uh, one so instead of writing this i will simply replace that with such an array and then the high of the uh, action space will be np.array self dot max capacity so that completes the definition of the action space and i actually wanted to write this line here so right next we turn our attention to the observation space and yet again we need to decide on these three key things the bounds the space type and the shape. So let's decide on the shape first. As we know, the observation looks like this. We can divide this array into two parts. The part starting from lambda and containing the problem parameters has a constant size of four, one, two, three, Four. And the number of elements in the previous part of the array is equal to the lead time, since we are including the historical actions up to lead time minus one, and additionally having the on-hand inventory. Thus, the shape of the observation area, the length of the observation array, depends on the lead time. Therefore, if we set the lead time to 5, then the length of the observation array, which we will call self.obstim, will be simply self.lead time plus 4. Cool. So let's decide on the bounds now. And we can set this individually for each element in the observation array. Since all the elements of the observation array are positive, the lower bound of all elements is zero. So we can use an array filled with zero as the lower bound. So we'll simply use NP zeros and then the shape should be self.obstim. Now the upper bound of the first five elements is given by the storage capacity because neither the on-hand inventory nor the actions can exceed that. The upper bound of the other parameters is up to us to set. So I'm going to choose some numbers arbitrarily here to ensure that the environment can cover a wide range of values for the demand, for the prices and the holding cost. So I'm going to set the max of the daily demand to 200. The max of the selling price to 100 and the max possible holding cost per unit to 
to five. I don't need to set a max for the buying price separately because we will assume that we always sell products for a profit. So the buying price will always be lower than the selling price. So the max of the selling price will also be the max of the buying price. So given that we can define the high of our observation array at the observation. So obs high equals np dot array. And then the first five elements are capped by max cap self dot max capacity. And then the lambda is capped by max mean daily demand. The buying price and the selling price are both capped by the max unit selling price. And the holding cost is capped by the max. Uh, daily holding cost per unit. Lastly, we need to decide on the type of the observation space. Since at least one element, for example, the prices are floats, uh, we will once again choose the box data type. So the observation space can be written as self.observation space equals box the and then we simply set the low and the high of the of the box space. Awesome. So this is how you define the init method of custom environments and you need to define the action space and the observation space. In the next video, I will show you how to implement the reset method for the inventory management custom environment.